two boys deposit their bicycles in a corner and jump into a river with a waterfall down its side. As they're playing poker later, some other guys beckon them over, asking if they want to gamble, which they agree to. The two boys easily win the money, but one of the others asks them to give his money back since it's his for his mother's prescription. So the two tell him to jump into the river from the cliff if he wants the money, and they all start arguing before a rough-looking guy arrives, telling them that all money in this area is his. So the boy who won tells him to play a game with him, which he also wins, after which they all start celebrating, but the guy tries to take the money back by force, so they all jump into the river and swim to the other side while he furiously watches from above. A woman approaches Jake as he is deeply studying a painting and asks him to just let her take a picture of him so she can draw him for the Archibald, the portrait prize. Jake agrees and says he gives her permission to paint him. He then introduces himself and says he is a poker gambler. Once that's done, she says he should come around. It will be in six months, but he declines and leaves. He drives to a forest and walks in, saying Mikey, Paul, Alex, Drew, and him were inseparable friends, and his best friend was Drew since they had a lot in common and were especially fond of all kinds of poker. Once they were introduced to the bigger markets, Drew had a Eureka, and they repurposed their old poker program into a military-grade surveillance software called Riffle, which they sold to governments. He enters an enclosure and meets a person named Paje, who takes him outside and correctly deduces that he's burdened by something related to his mortality. Later, he explains that Jake will always be accompanied by someone during his stay here and that he'll know when it's time as Jake goes through a flurry of visions. In a different place, he hands him a box, saying, it's got a sort of truth serum, which will help him open up easily, and adds that 10 milliliters of this liquid directly injected inside will kill a person, after which the two embrace each other and Jake leaves. While he's working on his laptop, his daughter enters and asks him for some money since she's found a really cute jacket at the arcade before walking up to the window, saying mom would be so proud of him as the two share a tender moment. Later, his lawyer arrives and explains all the details and that he'll meet the boys and meet him at the pad, asking if he's told Drew, to which he answers that he hasn't, not yet. Jake answers that this might not be one of the best decisions he's ever made, but at least he won't live to regret them. Jake later opens the box Paje had given him and takes out the fluid and a syringe. Later, Mikey and Paul run into each other as reporters huddle around Paul, and they make the decision not to wait for Alex because it's likely that he's already there. They go down to the parking lot and meet Alex there. They all greet each other before the lawyer asks them to pick up any of the cars here, since Jake wants them to think of this as a race and that he's going to have to drive Mikey as he takes a sip of wine. The others quickly get in and start racing towards the unknown penthouse they're supposed to reach while Jake heads there on his helicopter. On the way, Mikey tells his chauffeur that they're going to win since this is the fastest car, spec-wise. Jake arrives at the house and an attendant explains everything, so he tells her to show the guys to their rooms and asks if Penelope's there before saying they can take the night off once they're done. He meets the chef and says he'll be cooking tonight and will try to not make a mess of his kitchen. Then he activates surveillance and heads to a room, unlocking a safe and showing Penelope five equal stacks of RFID chips, telling her to hold on to them. The guys arrive one after the other and are shown to their rooms, where Mike takes out a gun and hides it in his jeans. They go meet Jake, and they all cheerily greet each other as Jake pours them all wine, saying he only buys what he drinks. After hearing that they like the cars, he says they're theirs now as a gift from him to them, which will be legally passed on under their name. They can either keep those dream cars or convert them to $5 million in chips, on which they're all going to gamble. The winner takes all. He gives the decision to Alex, since he took the Maybach, which came first, and leaves it for them to discuss it among themselves. Alex says they shouldn't take either of the two and that they should just gamble for their normal stakes since he doesn't want to owe Jake anything. But Mikey interrupts him, telling Alex that even though he's making some good money in his books, the same doesn't go for him and that he'll be playing. Meanwhile, Jake tells Penelope about them and says they're going to worsen as the drinks keep coming. All the guys get to the room and walk over to the table where Penelope introduces herself as the dealer tonight and they start the game, slowly progressing through it while recounting old stories. Meanwhile, Jake's daughter, Rebecca, 
worryingly calls his wife Nicole and asks what's happening, saying she isn't that small of a child. So Nicole pulls her car over and explains on call that Jake recently got a vasectomy done. And even though they didn't want to burden her with half-siblings, she did want to have a child later on, which is why they're getting a divorce. But Rebecca interrupts her and says she's been looking at his medical records, which say that he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Hearing this, Nicole says she's going to come get her, and they'll talk to Jake after that. Meanwhile, Jake's lawyer notices a problem in the security and goes to check it before being grabbed from behind, after which Drew suddenly enters the poker room, holding Jake's lawyer, seeing which the guys happily leave the table and sit down, after which he explains that Jake used riffle on them. So Jake explains that he put a poison in all their drinks, which puts them all on equal footing with him, who's been diagnosed with inoperable pancreatic cancer. Hearing that they'll possibly die in a while, the three start opening up, and Mikey says he was going to bid them all goodbye and kill himself, holding out his gun. Paul says he's being blackmailed by his brother Victor for his sensitive videos with a girl which must not be leaked, but he's out of money now, so he sold Jake his personal, sensitive information. Alex says he's been having an affair with a woman, Jake's wife, and they're going to have a baby, which is why he can't die yet. After hearing this, Jake says it wasn't strong enough to kill them, just some minor doses, so Mikey asks how much time he has and if it's enough to last a game of poker. Suddenly, they notice three guys sneaking through the house through the cameras, and Paul shamefully says it's Victor before they quickly find a place to hide since these guys don't know where they are. The robbers go through the house, examining the arts set up and examining each of them. Victor keeps asking their values to the guy he brought along for it, but so far they only come up with pieces worth a couple grand before finding a staircase and going down it. They run into a panic room, and Drew loads Mikey's gun. As Jake sets up the surveillance on them, the guys reach the bar, so Victor takes a sip from a wine glass and blows a lit cigar sitting there. Drew tells Jake that they should just jump them with the guns since they have the advantage in numbers, but he replies that he doesn't have any firearms because he already has a panic room. As Victor walks around the room, his guy points at the three paintings and says they'll easily go for three million at an auction. Victor addresses Jake, saying he knows he's there, so Jake zooms in on his face and activates the large screen, confirming Victor's suspicion. He tells his other guy to go look for them. Jake assures Drew, saying they've got Mikey's gun, but he replies that it only has one bullet since it'd only take one to kill him. As Victor keeps finding more and more art, the others tell Jake that they should just rush at them, but he says they've got three shotguns against one bullet and that they should wait them out until they leave since the drug will hit Victor even harder as he gets more adrenalized. The art guy shows the other one a painting, explaining the story and meaning behind it, but he seems uninterested and says the only good painting is the one he saw above with a couple of men playing poker and smoking pipes because it tells a story. But the guy suddenly freezes and asks if it was a white pipe and a tall hat. Once he confirms this, he runs upstairs and takes a look at it. Meanwhile, Jake sees Natalie and Rebecca entering the house and angrily asks what they're doing here. Victor also notices someone coming and spitefully asks who that is. So Jake quickly takes the gun from Drew, saying they don't know it only contains one bullet and runs outside, telling Mickey to get the door. As Rebecca and Natalie enter the room, Victor and his guy quickly grab them up and tie them to a chair before the other guy comes back and angrily tells him that a painting upstairs is a Cezanne worth $200 million and asks what a guy like that could do to them after they're done with his house. But Victor furiously shoves him away and trains the girls on the women before Jake enters the room, pointing the gun at him. He tells him to go get the $200 million art upstairs and get out, saying it's a two-man job. So Victor tells the two guys to get it. Jake slowly approaches Victor, saying he poisoned the other guys, and asks Victor if he's feeling good, asking if he touched the glass before telling him that he'd poisoned it. He says there's a safe nearby, containing a lot of cash and the antidote needed to cure the poison, and he's going to get it. He slowly puts down the gun, walks toward the safe, and starts taking the cash out. Meanwhile, the other guys attacked Victor's unarmed robbers while they were removing the cover of the Cezanne. Jake takes out the antidote and loads it into a syringe, but Victor hits him from behind and triumphantly grabs the syringe and hacks it into his leg before drunkenly running away. Meanwhile, the guys successfully disarm Victor's robbers and drag them away. 
Jake pursues him, but sees that he's already dead. Later, Jake's lawyer reads out his final will, passing half of his entire property to 21 charitable institutions, leaving the business to Drew, giving some of the money to Mikey, Alex, Paul, and Nicole, and leaving everything else to Rebecca. Meanwhile, the girl from before wins the Archibald Prize for painting Jake. 